Today I welcome for a new presentation in Easy and Different Radiology. I am Dr. Osama Ibrahim from Easy and Different Radiology um, and today I'm going to talk about the mesenteric paniculitis as uh, part 4 from Radiology in GIT as this uh, tutorial I started in it. So let's start our presentation. The learning objective from my presentation today is uh, to highlight uh, the role of CT and the ultrasound in diagnosis of mesenteric paniculitis. And the contents of my presentations, including synonyms of other names of mesenteric paniculitis, mesentery, I will talk about uh, anatomy of the mesentery a little bit, and causes of mesenteric paniculitis. Uh, then I will talk about the clinical symptoms patient presented with it in mesenteric paniculitis and the clinical testing and workup. Uh, at the end of my presentation, I will talk about the radiologic uh, uh, radiographic diagnosis of mesenteric paniculitis and I uh, finishing my presentations by case study from my daily work cases. So, synonyms of mesenteric paniculitis, sclerosing mesenteritis, mesenteric lipodystrophy, and retractile mesenteritis. Any of these uh, uh, descriptions or any of these names or any of these synonyms can be replacing the name of mesenteric paniculitis. The mesentery uh, uh, the mesentery is a fold of tissue within the peritoneum that supports the, uh, and attaches the small bowel and large bowel to the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, the mesentery contains fat, blood supplies, lymphatic tissue, lymphatic vessels, and other forms of connective tissue. Anatomists uh, previously considering it the mesentery to be a fragmented collections of intra-abdominal connective tissue. However, recently the anatomy uh, of the mesentery has been clarified and the mesentery has been found to represent a continuous organ that extends from the duodenal flexure to the mesorectum. The portion of the mesentery that is adjacent to the small intestine is the most common site for the mesenteric paniculitis. As we mentioned, the mesentery extending from the duodenal flexures to mesorectum. However, the part anterior to the small bowels is the most common part for the mesenteric paniculitis. So the mesentery in images like these diagrams or these uh, sagittal CT examinations can describe the mesentery uh, through these landmarks. The visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum, these two lines, which can be appeared uh, here anteriorly. The uh, fissures for ligamentum venosa, this one, which can be seen also here due to injections of contrast in the peritoneum or if there are uh, ascites, massive ascites, you can discriminate so all these structures. The lesser momentum, uh, these lines which extensions for the fissure of ligamentum venosus, so this line is representing the lesser momentum, and the lesser sac is posterior to that line, posterior to the stomach, so this one is called the lesser sac. Then the other line here which bounding the lesser sac posterior is a transverse, uh, uh, transverse meso colon or mesocolon. Uh, uh, the greater momentum after that is anteriorly, this one, or this one in the diagram, and is in the small bowel surrounding by mesentery, and also the sigmoid colon and uh, are also surrounding by mesentery, and this pouch is the Douglas pouch between the uterus and the colon. After talking about the anatomy uh, in fast for the mesentery, what is the cause of mesenteric paniculitis? There is little information available on the causes of mesenteric paniculitis. However, autoimmune diseases are believed to occur when patients with genetic predispositions to the disease are exposed to an environmental factor that uh, triggers an 
inappropriate immunologic healthy response. This response ultimately leads to chronic inflammation. So autoimmune disease is considered one from the most important causes uh, uh, representing the mesenteric panniculitis due to chronic inflammation. To this uh, end, many conditions have been associated with the possible possibly predisposed to the development of the mesenteric panniculitis. These causes, including surgery, if there are previous surgery, can cause fatty stranding and mesenteric panniculitis, acute pancreatitis, and other autoimmune conditions, as well as trauma. All of them resulting in fatty stranding, which is the cause or the main cause for mesenteric panniculitis. However, the autoimmune uh, disease can consider the if there are no history of disease, trauma, surgery, or acute pancreatitis. Clinical symptoms, uh, the patient of mesenteric panniculitis, uh, uh, clinical symptoms are highly variable, and some individuals have few or no noticeable uh, symptoms. Others uh, may uh, be greatly affected by a variety of complications, including abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, bloating, early satiety, loss of appetite, and diarrhea. Constipations can be presented by for those patient of mesenteric panniculitis. Systemic symptoms also like fatigue uh, commonly occurs in patients with mesenteric panniculitis. So if you presented with case like this in the CT abdomen with axial images with fat stranding like this, the fat stranding here in the mesentery representing mesenteric panniculitis. Uh, you can notice the hyper attenuations of fat in these regions of pathology and uh, also the hollow signs of hypo attenuations surrounding it which is discriminating it from other uh, mesenteric uh, masses like lymphoma or mesothelioma like this. So mesenteric panniculitis are characterized by this hollow sign and the hyper attenuating fat inside. Clinical testing and workup uh, uh, affected individuals with mesenteric panniculitis may be uh, presented with uh, 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 finding reduce of red blood cell count like anemia and also due to fat stranding which are representing inflammation so the inflammatory markers may be also noted elevated like ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rates or C-reactive protein, CRP as a signs of or, or marker for inflammation. And what about the radiographic diagnosis or radiological finding? Uh, these, uh, uh, the next five uh, diagnostic signs that have been filtered to be specific for mesenteric panniculitis and separated from the other causes of abdominal masses, including the sign one, presence of well-defined mass effect on neighboring uh, structures. Sign two, mesenteric fat tissue of inhomogeneous higher attenuations than adjacent retroperitoneal or mesocolonic fat. Sign three containing small uh, soft tissue nodes inside the mesenteric panniculitis. Sign four, it may typically be surrounded by a hypoattenuating fatty hollow sign and uh, also, hyperattenuating pseudo capsule can be also noted as a sign five. So this is the five signs radiographic diagnosis of the mesenteric panniculitis. And now with the case study from my daily work cases uh, with mesenteric panniculitis, this uh, gentleman, 45 years old, presented with chronic abdominal pain and fatigue. By ultrasound, I notice mass in uh, the middle of the abdomen, and this mass containing fats like this uh, uh, image from my daily work cases, ultrasound, focal mesenteric fatty lesion. By Doppler study for these regions, I can discriminate the vessel inside the fat, and these vessels are patent and colored in Doppler images, and this is also sign, uh, good signs we can consider in the diagnosis of mesenteric pantulitis 
these uh, patent vessels or mesenteric veins. And again, this uh, CT, which is done for the patient to exclude uh, mesenteric mass, I find uh, the mesenteric fatty lesions uh, with uh, vessels inside it compared by the Doppler study, which I did uh, uh, as initial examination. So fatty lesion in the mesentery with patent vessels inside it representing uh, mesenteric paniculitis and diagnostic for the mesenteric paniculitis. Again, these images from my dual work cases uh, study. Same patient also when uh, this CT images uh, in the axial images showing the fatty lesions with mesenteric vessels inside and this is the jejunal loops as well as this one is uh, aorta, IVC, right kidney and so on. So this is an axial image showing mesenteric uh, lesions in the uh, sagittal view confirming the presence of this hyperattenuating mesenteric fat inside the mesentery which also diagnostic for the mesenteric paniculitis again notice this uh, yellow arrow which referring to the vessels which patent inside the mesenteric fatty lesions confirming the diagnosis of mesenteric paniculitis And this image also I did after, uh, uh, and I advise you to do it as an inverted image, which can discriminating the hyperattenuating fatty lesions, discriminating it from the mesenteric fat, uh, normal mesenteric fat. So this is negative image CT coronal or inverted image. You can discriminate the fatty lesions clearly through this image. And uh, this also representing well circumscribed mesenteric fatty uh, lesions, which is consistent with diagnosis of mesenteric uh, paniculitis. Again, this uh, for the same case study from my daily work case. To summarize my presentation, mesenteric paniculitis, also known as sclerosing mesenteritis, belongs to a spectrum of rare disease of the fatty adipose tissue of the mesentery. Mesenteric paniculitis is characterized by fat degenerations and necrosis, chronic inflammations, and at times scarring and fibrosis as the late stages of mesenteric paniculitis of fatty tissue within the mesentery. Uh, this inflammatory and at times progressively conditions is most consistent with autoimmune disorders after exclusions of other causes like surgery or trauma. Uh, or acute pancreatitis as a disease uh, uh, leading to mesenteric paniculitis. So autoimmunes can be considered if there are no history of surgery or trauma or acute pancreatitis. You should search for it. And uh, there is currently limited understanding of the progressions of events that leads to the development of mesenteric uh, paniculitis. At the end of my presentations, I hope I provide you clear knowledge about mesenteric paniculitis, helping you for diagnosis and also know the causes as well as uh, uh, autoimmune cause. Don't forget it as a main cause for mesenteric paniculitis, excluding uh, other causes of surgery or trauma. Uh, thank you very much for your watching, listening and have a nice day.